Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today to talk about the worst books I read in 2020. <laughs> These are, I want to say kind of in no particular order. I did make the worst of the year the worst, <laughs> number one worst, but two through ten is kind of a toss. It was really hard for me to kind of rank them because I was like, I, do I, I don't know what I based that on because I hated them all. That's why they're on the list. <laughs> so it was kind of the order that felt right as I made my list, but I'm not married to that order. Even as I'm looking at it right now, I'm like, mm -hmm. Nah, they're all terrible. So I don't recommend any of these books. <laughs> so we're still gonna go 10th to 1st, in theory, in ascending order of horribleness. But again, like... So 10th worst is Black Chalk by Christopher Yates. This is dark academia that takes place in Oxford and is about this sort of uh, group of students that were playing this game where you don't actually know anything about the game that they're playing, but the point of or the reason the game is important is because the consequences of doing badly in the game are these escalating dares. So it's told both in the present day and in the past. So in the present day, we're following one of the students who's clearly, whose life is clearly a shambles. And you're led to believe that this is most likely in some way the result of directly or indirectly of the game. And then you go back to find out. He's kind of writing a memoir about uh, how he went to Oxford, how this game started to be a thing, and how it, it escalated and affected all their lives so horribly. So it basically sounded like all the secret history vibes. I love the secret history and I need, I go into most Dark Academia not expecting it to be as good as secret history because it's never gonna live up. And if it does, well, wow, I don't expect it. It just, it was so boring. <laughs> It completely failed to write compelling characters, which is really what you need in order to tell a story like this, because that's what's interesting. It, that's what makes a story like this, is the characters being compelling. It's always going to be a character-driven story, and if your characters are shitty, that's what makes or breaks it. The characters were really two-dimensional, and they don't have to be likable. They absolutely, I mean, it's weird if they are likable. They have to be interesting and uh, believable in terms of how they're reacting to things, even if it's reprehensible. The characters were really dull, and honestly, the consequences, these escalating dares, that I think I'm meant to be shocked by failed to shock me. I mean, it was not good things. I mean, those kind of bad things. And I guess if I knew somebody personally, I'd be like, that's kind of messed up that you made them do that. But it wasn't really anything that horrible, salacious or criminal. It was like, oh, that's kind of fucked up, I guess. <laughs> it, 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 it was really, I don't know. I feel like I could come up with worse stuff. <laughs> and so especially the way that it keeps building up is like, okay, but it got worse and it got worse. I was like, okay, well, I mean, I guess we're just starting out. So I guess it'll get worse, but it, it never really did. Like none of the dares really were that bad. Honestly, I feel like a better example of escalating dares to really fuck with people's lives is actually one of my all time favorite movies that I don't know that I've ever had occasion to mention on this channel, but I recommend is Love Me If You Dare with Marion Cotillard. Uh, it's in French, but if you want escalating dares, watch that. <laughs> it's a great movie. Next up, I've got Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahurin. I think that's how you say her name. Mahurin? I don't know. I was <laughs> tricked into reading this. I know it was a hate to love, enemies to lovers, witch hunter meets witch love, marriage of convenience story. I heard some strange things about it before I picked it up, i.e. that it kind of, it doesn't really, it's not a fantasy world and it's not historical fiction. It's kind of trying to have its cake and eat it too. It doesn't really bother creating its own world, but it's technically not our world, but it's basically France with magic where it's, but it's also not France, so it can get away with messing with things. It's just really lazy. The characters in a story like this, if it did have really lazy world building like that, I'd be willing to forgive if it was like a really cool character study, character portrait, a really compelling romance that kind of swept me away. I'd be like, well, who cares if it's kind of like just vaguely France? Like that's not what we're here for. But the characters weren't interesting either. They were really childish, silly, two-dimensional cardboard cutouts of Barbie dolls. And I was like, this is so painfully boring and stupid and melodramatic. And I hate the main characters. I don't find them, like I don't ship them because I hate them. <laughs> it was so painful to read and so bad. Like from every perspective, it wasn't something like I've read bad books that were still like enjoyable you know because like the writing was kind of addicting in a way where it is kind of trashy over the top or melodramatic in some way but it kind of like sucks you in and you kind of want to read more it just wasn't like that this was just so dumb it was so dumb i hated it so much next up i have guinevere deception by kirsten white this is an arthur retelling but from the perspective of guinevere except that guinevere is a changeling so she's not actually guinevere and this was just such an odd book. And despite all of its oddness, it was so boring. Every point in the book where, I, where you had the opportunity to make it interesting, she managed to make it boring by immediately removing uncertainty and mystery. And uh, that's really all there is to a story like this. If you're going to be telling a story that's kind of all Guinevere just kind of wandering around being a changeling. <laughs> There wasn't really a romance in it to suck you in. There wasn't really a mystery to suck you in. The world was kind of like 
a flat, boring, simplified version of the Arthur legend. So there wasn't really anything interesting in terms of the atmosphere to suck you in. It was just so flat and boring and dull. And I was shocked that Kristen White wrote it because I love her Conqueror saga and the Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein. So I expected her to be able to handle Arthur decently well. It was so childish and boring. I, I honestly don't know how you make a story like that boring, but it was so boring. Next up, I have Nocturna by Maya Montaigne. People had sort of pitched this to me or I'd heard it compared to the Shades of Magic series by V.E. Schwab, but like Latinx Shades of Magic. And um, this book was so bad. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that about all of them, but it was like a shitty version of Shades of Magic, but nothing even like internally made sense. And the idea of having this sort of like Latinx inspired magic system is like cool, but it was executed so horribly where like Spanish was like the language of magic. So like, okay, I guess that's kind of a cool idea. Except they also speak Spanish sometimes, but it's like Spanglish. And I was like, are, is Spanish magic or no? Cause like y'all are using Spanish as like Spanglish slang, but also using it for magic. And then the character decisions literally did not make sense. One of the character decisions was so stupid and so poorly explained and motivated that it's the kind of thing where I'm like, I really, how am I supposed to sympathize with you when you did a, like such a horrible thing? for such a stupid reason. Like, how are you not the villain? I, I don't sympathize with you. I'm not like, oh man, you know, like, that was a tough situation. Like, no, that was like the dumbest possible thing you could have done with horrible consequences. You're the worst. You're the, absolutely the worst. I hope you die. It was so dumb and so badly written. It was, uh, it wasn't just that it was like kind of childish, which it was. It just wasn't, it didn't make sense internally. And it was so frustrating to read. Oh, I hated it. <laughs> Next up, I have Dangerous Alliance by Janiki Cohen, I think is her name. I don't know how to say her name. And this was purported to be this kind of like fun historical romance with nods to Jane Austen, which I didn't have high expectations for it being like quality literature, but I thought it'd be like a good time. I thought it'd have some sort of like fun banter, some historical vibes, a cute romance, some cute nods to Jane Austen. That's really all I wanted out of it. And it even failed on that level because the main character was so painfully unlikable. The Jane Austen nods were so many and so ham fisted that they weren't cute, fun little nods. It was like Jane Austen, you know? Yeah, I fucking know. It was really anachronistic to a point where it wasn't like something where I could suspend my disbelief because this is a fun little quirky romance. Like it wasn't a fun romance. So then the anachronisms were more painful <laughs> and it was just above all, it's 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 worst crime is being boring as shit. <laughs> Next up, I have Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Eames. I know I'm in the minority on this one, but uh, I found it to be disgusting. <laughs> Kings of the Wild is, uh, it was kind of pitched to me as Joe Abercrombie meets Spinal Tap. Two things that I adore. I love Joe Abercrombie books and I love this is Spinal Zap. And uh, this is the worst of both worlds. It is not really grimdark fantasy, but it is adult fantasy where it's the idea that it's a band of mercenaries, but a band of mercenaries kind of like a rock band. Oh, that's the that's why it's compared to Spinal Tap because the idea is sort of bands of mercenaries are kind of regarded almost as rock bands. So it's this over the hill band of mercenaries. It's come back together for one last tour, but it's like to rescue somebody. So I went into it expecting and hoping for some subtle nods that the, it's kind of alluding to how this could co possibly kind of sort of be compared to a rock band. But I didn't expect it to be so overtly wink, wink, nudge, nudge. They're like a rock band. And the humor in it was so gross, so juvenile, so lacking in subtlety. Like the jokes were like American Pie. It was like Renaissance Fair American Pie, where like these dudes are like in armor doing some dumb magic that makes no sense. The characters didn't really make sense. Their motivations didn't make sense. Making these really stupid, juvenile, sexist jokes. The story was boring. It wasn't compelling. The rock band references were frequent and stupid. I just, I was so disgusted, disappointed, and bored the whole time I was reading it. I was just like, really? Really? Next up, I have Malice by John Gwynn, which I expected to love. I bought all four books in the series in one go because I expected to love it. Because I'd heard it had sort of Viking-y vibes, was this epic adult fantasy with like lots of adventure and violence and a, a cool cast of characters. And I was like, oh yeah, like I'm gonna chew my way through that. No problem. That is gonna be my shit. It was so childish. <laughs> there were so many characters thrown at you. None of them really felt fleshed out or made sense. So many things were shown to you from like the multiple perspectives, but they're like in the same house in the same place at the same time. And I was just like, you don't need all these perspectives. You really don't. And it was, it felt the world didn't feel like a world. It felt like a cardboard cutout set of a world where we have this sort of wish fulfillment-y, slightly Viking inspired hero on a hero's quest 
with the most generic derivative conversations of like the mentor talking to you about how to be a hero and what it means to face your fears and why you're so different and you fight like nobody else. It was just so, so that. <laughs> I was like, it... I guess if you're like inserting yourself in this and living out your dream, I guess that could be kind of interesting and compelling. But as a story, it was boring as hell and it wasn't it wasn't original or interesting in any way. <laughs> Next up, I have Uprooted by Naomi Novik. I really had to push myself to finish that book. It was so boring and stupid. Everyone talks about how, oh, it's this like really cool, dark, magical forest and this sort of unlike one main character, but the writing is so lush and the prose is so purple and it's got these like Slavic vibes. And I was like, oh yeah, give me that. Except the prose I found to be really quite dull, really flat and boring and simple, except for when the magic was described and then all of a sudden it got purple or shit because the magic made no sense. So it felt like it was kind of like, you know when essays get really long when you don't know the subject matter, but you're trying to get a passing grade? That's how the magic was written. Like it was just like lots and lots of words so that the reader would be like, magic but it's just a lot of words. The magic made no sense, even for a soft magic system. The main character didn't really have a personality and what personality he did have was not compelling, interesting, or more sympathetic. The romance was kind of yikes because the main, the dude that's like the romantic lead or hero or interest, he was this like horrible, grumpy, kind of abusive character that that behavior is never questioned. It's never explained. It's never changed. It's not that like, you find out some like some, some mitigating factor or that he sees the error of his ways or like he was somehow mistaken and that's why he was behaving that way but uh, that misunderstanding is a result no like he is that horrible grumpy thing and that's who she falls in love with and i was just like but what i ugh, it was so so boring i had to, i struggled to push myself to finish that freaking book oh no Next up, I have Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. I read two Naomi Novik books this year, but both were terrible. And I intend to read Spinning Silver for some fucking reason. Deadly Education had all the opposite problems of Uprooted. It had too much world building, too much magic building, too much explanation. In fact, the entire book was just one giant explanation for how this bonkers school and magic were supposed to work, which honestly doesn't make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> like there's so many rules and so many things and so many deadly circumstances that when you actually, it's like we were told about each individual leaf on each individual tree. But when we look at the wood, this wood does not work as a cohesive whole. You cannot have this forest function. <laughs> That's an odd analogy considering Uprooted has an actual forest. Basically it's trying to say that she missed the wood for the trees in Deadly Education. The main character isn't a character. She's a vehicle for delivering exposition and she's not likable what little character she does have. Of. The deadly school makes zero sense and it doesn't feel deadly or dangerous or suspenseful because everything is deadly. So when you paint everything black, <laughs> doesn't really stand out, does it? And uh, yeah, it's just bad, boring and bad. And my number one worst book of the year was Daring and the Duke by Sarah McLean. This was a book that Amanda picked for her buddy read, so I'm sorry, Amanda, but I hated it. Like burn it with fire. Oh, that's one of the worst books I've ever read in my life. <laughs> it was a bodice ripper, which I knew going into it, which is fine, but the characters like didn't make any sense. Their choices made no sense. The world made no sense. They were horrible. It was horrible. I kept like every few pages, I kept going like, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> That's so dramatic for no reason. And the most painful thing about it was that it's it's taking the like miscommunication thing that drives the plot of so many romances, which is why I don't really like romance often because I hate that. But it's this it was turned up to eleven. It wasn't even that they kept failing to have the opportunity to explain themselves and to resolve this misunderstanding. They had opportunities galore, like so many opportunities where they were one on one and they could explain themselves and completely resolve this misunderstanding that carries on throughout the entire plot of this book, if you can call it a plot. And they just don't take the opportunity to explain themselves. They think about it. If only she knew this thing, then, you know, she might understand. Well, she's standing right in front of you, bro. And there's no one else around. Now would be the time. But nope, we're just gonna think about how, oh, if only she knew. If only there was a way that I could communicate to her, like with my words or something. Oh man, they deserve each other, those two nincompoops. And the, there's this like weirdly, like completely absurd feminist plot that wasn't a fun feminist plot. It, it can be unbelievable as long as it's kind of like fun or believable within its own internal logic. And it wasn't, it was stupid. It was so stupid and it was so ham-fisted. It was so hashtag feminist. She's running around wearing pants and being a fighter and like owns her own gambling den. It was just like so extra. I feel like 
part of what makes a feminist character compelling in a historical time period is how much they kind of have to fight to carve out even their own small space. And she carved out basically a massive empire for herself and all of her ladies to the point where I was like, so you like rule the world. It's not really feminist when it seems just so doggone easy. It's kind of, it's a lot more feminist when women in historical time periods have to fight and have to sacrifice in order to carve out some piece of independence. They, she sacrificed nothing. <laughs> she has her own like empire of gambling and iniquity. And he's a complete psychopath, honestly. Even his explanation for why he did the things he did. I was like, those are also like, I know you keep thinking to yourself, you wish she knew and you could tell her, but you're choosing not to. But also if she knew, like, I, I'm not sure that your explanation is actually mitigating in any way because you're still cuckoo. Those are not okay things to have done. I don't, those are not good reasons to have done those things. So the book was one giant massive fucking yikes. <laughs> so those are my worst books of the year. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these books, if you felt the way that I did about them, if you felt the opposite, if these were in fact your favorite books of the year, let me know all the things. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, but definitely Saturdays. So like and subscribe. And I'll see you when I see you.